Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and welcome to a look at a new digital board game that's come out on the Nintendo Switch today. This is Evolution, the board game. This comes from North Star Games and will set you back £14.99 in the UK, $19.99 in America. And uh, I'll go through a list of features in a little while, but I'll just basically uh, we'll have a quick look around uh, the options and stuff and what's available in this game. And then we'll dive into a bit of gameplay. This is a digital adaptation of a real board game and it's really highly thought of uh, I played it a while back at a board game club also got the uh, digital version on my iPad came out a, a couple of years ago I think it was now uh, which I really enjoy playing so we're just gonna have a look around the switch version uh, it's gonna skip the account now because it doesn't do a good job of hiding any private information but uh, there you can see you can add some friends if you've got online games. This is here, uh, the sketches. So whenever you level up, you get a new sketch to look at. Quite a nice little feature. Uh, rankings here. So you've got online rankings. And there's also like uh, local rankings as well for when you win games. You earn badges and uh, those sort of uh, badges determine your rank and just little things. More stuff to collect really. There's an online store that says coming soon. I think that may be for packs of cards. Uh, the game itself, if you buy it now, comes with five promo cards, I believe, um, that you can add into your deck. That's uh, so if you order it within a certain space of time. And uh, quite a nice help section as well. You've got lots of uh, stuff about the uh, the rules of the game. Freaking nice questions, a card index, and then the credits there. And there are the tutorials. Now, they really are worth going through. It's not the most complicated game in the world. But there is certainly a fair bit going on. Now we're going to dive into a. Uh, oh, actually, let's have a look at the. Let's go back to the uh, modes first. So he can start a local game or an online game. Uh, online is pretty self-explanatory. As I say, it's got um, asynchronous mode, so you can uh, take your turn and then shut the game down. And then somebody else online can take their turn. And then when you come back, you get notified that the other person's made their move. So you don't have to be sitting online at the same time, which is pretty cool. But we're going to go into a local game, have a look at the options here. You can have a straight game against the AI. There's a pass and play mode, which uh, a lot of people ask for in Switch board games. So you'd be glad to see that that's here. And then a really nice weekly challenge where you get set um, you know, a, to play a game, but with certain rules. So this one here is untouchable win a game without ever losing population and you get rated for those and there's a weekly leaderboard so really like that it's a nice little sort of a bit of extra polish on the game as well that uh, you don't always get in these uh, online digital uh, adaptations of board games so the campaign mode I've already played through this on the uh, iPad just show you what it entails though basically you travel across the map I think there's 21 if I remember levels something like that 21 single player levels yeah so it's gonna take around about eight hours I think it took me a bit longer on the iPad but um, it's gonna take between six and eight hours to uh, to complete this campaign mode and it's pretty good as well we'll really drill you into the uh, the basics of the game so I've already been through it before so I don't really uh, not really got much desire to go through it again on the switch I'll just stick to playing local AI games which we'll have a look at now. We're just going to start an AI game. As I say, there is a, a lot going on, so we're just going to do a two-player game, although you can have up to four. Uh, you can add these promo cards in, as I say, that uh, come with the game, just extra cards. I'm not going to add those in. And uh, actually, before we go any further, I really do need to point out that this game only uses Joy-Cons. There is a patch coming. I was expecting, from what I believed, it was going to be out with the launch of the game. But I've tried up updating the uh, my version I've got here, and it's uh, sad I've got the current version. But basically, Pro Controllers at the moment are not working with the game, but I know they are working to get that uh, sorted out pretty quickly. But just in case you do buy the game and realise you, know, you can't control it, you need to use the Joy-Cons. I've just got them detached here, one in each hand. So we're going to play against the uh, regular AI. We only want to play against one of them. I've already got one in there from my earlier games. Some settings here you can change, add in those cards. I'm going to start the game. My side of controls are okay. I'm hoping they're going to be tightened up a little bit in the, if there is a patch. Just sometimes a little bit unresponsive, which is a shame. 
but um, generally they, they do the job fine. But just you may find yourself fighting with them a little bit. So we've all that out of the way. Let's talk about what evolution is, how it's played. I won't go through every single rule. Obviously, we'd be here a while, but um, I'll try and explain what I'm doing as we go along. So this is a game about building um, a species and evolving it, as you may guess from the name. You give your species trait cards, uh, which sort of affect uh, their abilities and stuff. And you can also increase their population and the size of the creature as well. We'll see why that's important in a little while. Uh, creatures can either be vegetarian or carnivores. Again, we'll, we'll get into the rules of rules and why fours of, of all that in a second. But let's just start here. The first thing you need to do is everybody puts in a card into the watering hole and that determines how many pieces of food are going to be in the watering hole when it comes to feeding. So these are the cards I've started with in my hand. And uh, the number in the top left hand corner is how many pieces of food will be put into the pool. But when you play the card, you play it face down. So nobody knows at the start of a round how many pieces of food are going to be in there. So you want to make sure that you've got yourself covered unless you're going to go for sort of an all carnivore um, build and then you kind of maybe want to be using these minus cards to stuff the other players up. But we're going to start with, I think, a three. I actually know because we, I want to keep this card. This is a good card foraging. Take one additional plant food. So all my other cards. Well, I'm going to play a one. We're going to put one in. I don't particularly need this card right now. I really want to use this foraging card in one of my uh, first creatures. So we're going to put the one in. In they go face down. Uh, myself and the AI at the top of the screen both put in a card. So the first thing we've got, we've got this um, empty sort of um, claw in front of us. And we've got three slots in it to put three cards. These are the trait cards that we've currently got in our hand. Also the green number to the left is our population. And you see that at the moment that's one. And the number on the right in the blue is our body size, and also that's one. Body size kind of matters when you're being attacked by carnivores. A carnivore must have a bigger body size than you, generally, unless there's any cards that change that rule. But generally, that's the rule, that they uh, they must have a bigger body size to be able to attack you. Population uh, is just how many pieces of food that you need. The idea of the game, I should, I should really clarify, the idea of the game is to collect the most food over the course of six rounds so you can see why population would be quite an important thing to have because it means you're collecting more food every round but also means that you need to feed all of your um, creatures if you can't feed them you will lose a number off your population and if your population gets to zero your species is considered extinct and you lose all of those uh, cards and stuff. So you'll see how that plays out. So we've got this spare one at the start. So as I said, I wanted to play this card here first, Foraging, as a trait. And it lets us take one additional plant food, which is going to be really important. So we're going to play that. Press A to play it and you come up with these options. You can press Y to add the card to your population and you don't get to use its ability. Similarly with A, it just gets added to their body size, kind of face down. You don't get to use the trait. Or you can put it into one of the trait slots uh, and that becomes kind of a characteristic of your character. So now our uh, species, when it feeds, will take an extra food. These other cards we've got here as well. First one here is intelligence. This species gains special abilities when you discard cards during feeding. And in fertile, add one population if there is food in the watering hole from the previous round. I should add as well, uh, obviously, as you may be able to tell there, when the when the food's in the watering hole, if it doesn't all go, it will stay in there till the next round. So you can kind of build up an excess. I am not fussed about either of these cards right now. I think what I'm going to do is use this card as my... So I'll be careful about population because I know I've only put one food in. Depends how many food the AI have put in, but he's going to want at least one for his population. Depends if he's created a new uh, species or not, which I will actually uh, mention that in a second. I think I'm going to go body size. Just in case he's um, created a carnival. Now, the last thing you can do with your cards is to create 
an extra species. You can put them to the left or to the right, and that does matter because certain cards will allow you to pass things to your other species depending what side they're on. I'm not going to do it now because I don't, I, it's the kind of game you want to start off slow and then build up. You don't want to you know, have too many species out now, need to feed them all, and you can't, and they end up just becoming extinct. So, you know, it's a good idea just to start maybe with one, unless you've got some really good trait cards and then maybe have two. But I'm just going to show you that's where you would do uh, add an extra species, and you just basically get an extra paw. But I'm sure we're going to see that shortly. But I'm going to stick with what we've done there. Hold down R to end the turn, and then the cards get revealed. So. The AI card gets flipped over. If he put no food in. And uh, <laughs> he took my one piece of food that I, you know, um, generously put in. He had first dibs on it. So it basically killed off my species. Because I didn't have any, there was no food left in the watering hole. I needed at least one piece of food to... Uh, to feed my species I couldn't do that so it becomes extinct so that first round has been lost so we go again round two we need to put in we need to pick a card to put in how much uh, food we want to put into the watering hole given what happened last time I think it might be sensible to put four in just to make sure we get enough for ourselves and we need to build our species again because um, as you saw we lost it so I think we're going to try for a carnivore this card here, we play this as a trait card, and it means our species is carnivorous. And instead of taking food from the watering hole, which a carnivore will never do, he will attack another creature, even if that means attacking one of your own species. If there's nothing else to attack, he will attack, or you can choose to attack your own species. Basically, the carnivore has to feed every round. So if there's no other valid targets, it may well be the species to your left or right. So we're going to go with a carnivore build and we may also have a, as we put a bit more extra food in, we may also start a second build. I like this card here. This is the cooperation card. And as I was speaking about earlier about where you put your um, species, you know, where you create them on the table, this here allows you to share one food to the right. So we know our carnivore that we've just created doesn't eat plants, so it's no good putting it to the left. We're going to create that there to the right. And then if we build another carnivore to the right of that uh, species, then he will get food passed from that uh, that species. Sorry. Other cards we've got. We've got intelligence again. We've got climbing, which is quite good. Must have climbing to attack this species, which is uh, quite good for protection because uh, you know carnivores may not have climbing. So... You're kind of putting yourself up in the trees and the carnivores can't get you. Got two intelligence cards. Minus two and a four. You see the number in the top corner. Doesn't mean anything un unless we're talking about feeding. So just to make you uh, make you aware again that you know th the numbers don't really matter which card I play. It just depends how much I want to keep back for feeding in the next round. So I think I'm going to create... I'm going to increase the size of my uh, carnivore. The body size. Just to make sure... That he's big enough to attack. I'm going to play the climbing trait on my uh, vegetarian and intelligence. We're going to play that as a body size as well. So we've got quite a big carnivore here with a small population, and we've got a very small, very sort of uh, limited in numbers uh, vegetarian creature here. Although they can climb, so hopefully they can get up in the trees and escape any carnivores that come their way. So, end the turn. The AI there has increased his population to two and his body size to three. You can see we've revealed that we've built a, a carnivore. And as the carnivore has to have a bigger body size, it can't be the same size, it has to be bigger. That means the carnivore uh, cannot feed. And uh, ironically, the fact that we put climbing on our uh, vegetarian uh, species meant that our carnivore couldn't attack that either so our carnivores now died out but thankfully our um, species our, uh, our vegetarian species did manage to get some food and he survives into round three so we'll play one more round hope you're getting the uh, the gist of it it's a really enjoyable game it gets a bit confusing when there's more than sort of two once it gets to sort of four players 
really hard to keep track of what's going on unless you're quite experienced at it. That's why I've only started a two-player game here. I didn't want to sort of overwhelm what was going on. And it's much easier to explain in two players. But, you know, you can play up to four. And obviously, the more you've got, the more options you've got. But uh, as I say, it, it does look a bit overwhelming on the screen. So we're going to play another trait card. We know uh, at the moment our AI opponent has got a vegetarian. You can change that trait. They can turn it into a carnivore at any time. So we can't just trust that that's all they've got. We need to play a food card. We're going to play this five card. And you can see there's plenty of food left over. There's six bits of food left over from the last round as well. So we could go quite heavy here and build a couple of um, new species. We're going to use a card called Pack Hunting to create a new species. Uh, scavenger, receive one food after every carnivore attack. But defensive herding, the carnivore must be larger in population to attack this species. So not body size, they have to be a bigger pack to attack, which is quite useful. I've got two of those cards as well. Hmm. We're going to play that as a population because we need to start collecting food to get points. Uh, if you remember, points, uh, food are the only way that you get points. Well, that is not strictly true. It's the main way you get points. You do get awarded points for a sort of card you've got left over and a couple of other um, point scoring rules as well but mainly you want to collect as much food as possible going to increase the population there to three as there's loads of food and we're going to increase the population of this one to two so basically we need five food we know we put a five card in there's six bits of food out there already so there'll be 11 once at least 11 once our card gets turned over depending on what the ai has done let's have a look So we put in five. I can't see what they put in, it's too small. But it's plenty of food out there. So everybody gets fed, and you can see here at the bottom, if you keep your eye on it, there's our five food that we collected in that round. Goes into our bag in the bottom right hand corner. You can see we've got six points. No doubt at this stage the AI has got more than we have as well. So there you go. Um, I mean, I'm going to round up a few things here, so don't uh, click off just yet. But basically, that is the gameplay of evolution you keep going over six rounds and then at the end of six rounds you empty your food bag and say add, add up a few other things as well see who gets the the most points wins the game you get uh, awards as i say those badges um for um let's go back to the main menu for Winning multiple games in the same day, winning by a certain number of points, beating a certain amount of players. All different sorts of badges that you can earn as well in single player as well as the multiplayer mode. And the sort of online leaderboards and rankings. Which is really cool. I've only got a couple of niggles and that is the, uh, as I say, the controls take a little bit of getting used to. They're not quite as snappy and as intuitive as I'd like. Although you do gradually get used to them. I must say I do prefer the touchscreen version on the iPad. I haven't checked if there's touchscreen uh, on the Switch version, ironically enough. If anybody wants to know, leave me a comment below and I will check that out for you and I will let you know. Overall, it's really nice. got quite nice music. Graphics are quite nice. Everything moves along at a nice snappy pace. Uh, it's a really fun little game. It's not too heavy. It's not too complicated. And there's just a ni nice amount of complication. I really like card games where you can use the cards for multiple purposes, which you're doing here. You know, you can use them with the trait, increase the body size, make a new species. You know, you've got multiple ways to use those cards. So that means there's a great deal of strategy in the game. And it's just a really nice ball game. It's really nice to add it into the Switch collection of ball games. We've got a really nice range of ball games on the Switch now. Um, I'll probably be doing a top 10 towards the end of the year. I normally do that as, uh, as January draws closer. Uh, and there are still some board games to come, one very big one as well. To keep your eye out on the channel if you want some coverage of that. But that's Evolution from North Star Games. Highly recommend you pick it up. I would say that I'm a big fan of board games. I think this is a really good conversion. So my recommendation is a big thumbs up. Let me know below if you've got any questions. And uh, please give me a like if you enjoyed the video. And please subscribe if you're new. Be really appreciated. But until next time, I will bid you all farewell. And see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.